In this unit, we're going to study similar figures. In this lesson, we'll be finding unknown side lengths. Okay, hi everybody. So in this video, we're going to be looking at uh, similar figures here. We're going to find an unknown side length. So like I said here, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that what we're looking at right now are, are already similar figures. And there's a side there that we don't know. And so we're going to use the information that we're given to find that side that we don't know. So since corresponding sides are proportional, which means they, they are equal to the same scale factor, okay, we can use proportional reasoning to find that unknown side length. So here's what we're going to do here. First of all, we're going to identify which sides uh, are corresponding for both shapes here so that we can see what the, what the lengths are. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set up uh, some uh, proportions here. So for example, we should be able to have um, at least at least one pair of corresponding sides there. So what we might have here is the new one side compared to the old one side. And then we're going to compare that to the new, let's say, side two over the old side two. Now, one of these is going to be the unknown. So let's say, for example, that it's the it's the the new side two that we don't know. So then that's the one, that's where we're going to put our x. And then to solve for the x, we're going to cross multiply and then divide. And you've done that a uh, uh, number of times already. So that little pattern should be familiar with you. So again, we're going to look for that scale factor like we did in a previous lesson here. We're going to take uh, one of the sides here, probably the, the new shape here, T take one of its sides, take that length, divide it by its corresponding uh, side length in the old figure. And then we're going to set up an equal uh, proportion on that side. And again, cross multiply and divide. Okay, so let's take a look at some questions here. So the two rectangles, uh, okay, the two rectangles to the right or below are similar. Find the unknown side length here. So we know that these two rectangles are similar. So the sides are proportional here. Now, what's nice about using rectangles here is it's quite easy to find the, the proportional sides here. I know that the width will be proportional to the width here. And let's just say that this is, we'll call this one the old and we'll call this one the new. It doesn't really matter when we're, we're setting it up like this. So um, 4.5 is the width, and we're going to divide that by 3, the old width. And now the new width, uh, sorry, the new length is going to be x, and the old length is going to be 7. Now, I don't know uh, what that, that new length is going to be, but I do know that they're proportional here. So this, uh, this ratio here should be the same as this ratio right here. So now I cross multiply, so 4.5. And I'm going to multiply that by 7 is equal to 3 times x. Okay. And on my calculator here, I'm just going to go 4.5 times 7. And that gives me 31.5 is equal to 3 times x. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And I get 31.5 divided by 3. And I get 10.5 centimeters is the new length. Okay. So it's just as simple as that. So just a matter of coming up with uh, that first little bit of information. We just need enough information to come up with a scale factor. Okay, let's take a look at, sorry, another one here. The two triangles below are similar. Find the missing lengths. And then round your answer to the nearest tenth. Okay, so we know that these two are proportional. So once again, let's call this one the old one. And this one is going to be our new one. Okay, so when I take a look at this, uh, in terms of coming up with, with sides that are proportional, we got to make sure that we're, we're kind of reading this right here. This angle here looks really, really close to a right angle, and so does this one. So I'm assuming that those are the, the uh, again, I'm going to assume that those are the same. Those are the same angles there. So what that allows me to do is I'm going to use the side opposite the 5 and the 8 here. So I'm going to say 8 over 5 assuming that those two sides are, are proportional to each other, or corresponding to each other, okay, will now be the base here, okay, the, and then the smaller side there, the smaller base there, so x over 3. And then we'll cross multiply, so 8 times 3 is equal to 5 times x, so 8 times 3 is 24. And then I'll divide 24, I'm going to divide, sorry, divide both sides by 5, so 24 divided by, whoops, 24 divided by 5 is equal to 4.8. So 
So my new base here would be 4.8 inches. Then I would do the exact same thing to figure out what the y is. I've got 8 over 5 will equal y over, in this case, its corresponding side. The longer one there will be 4. So we're going to cross multiply. 8 times 4 will equal 5 times y. And it will be 32 is equal to 5y. And divide both by 5 there. So you just go to my calculator, 32 divided by 5, and I get 6.4 inches. And so there we go. You're able to use proportional reasoning, reasoning and the fact that these are similar to find the missing, the missing side. Okay, now in this problem we see that the two figures below are similar. Actually, should be below or similar. We're going to find x, y, and z here. Okay, so we've got these two L shapes here um, and we're going to find uh, the, the two corresponding sides here. Now I think the implication here, kind of based on the way this has worked out here, is that the, the two sides that correspond to each other are going to be the, the vertical side here, the 6 and the 4. So let's call this again, we'll call this the old, we'll call this one the new. Uh, it doesn't really, really matter all that much which one we do here. But now we're going to set up a ratio 4 over 6. Okay. Now, let's just pick a, pick a side here. So for example, we want to find out what x is. So x is the base of the new, and that's going to correspond to the base of the old. So now we'll cross multiply, so 4 times 9 will equal 6 times x, and so it'll be 36 is equal to 6x, and when I divide both sides by 6, I get that x is going to equal 6 centimeters. Okay, so x is going to be 6 centimeters. Perfect. Now, when I set this thing up here, it's going to be a little bit different because notice now that the unknowns are on the old one. But that doesn't really change how I approach this. So for example, we're going to solve for y here. I'm still going to use the same initial setup here. So 4 over 6. It's just now in this case here, for example, to get y, I'm going to use 1.87 over y. So the only difference between the first one that I did and this one right here is that in this case here, the variable is in the numerator. Here are the variables in the denominator. But it actually doesn't change anything in terms of what I do because I'm going to cross multiply. So this will be 6 times 1.87. Okay, and I'm going to multiply that out 6 times 1.87. And I'm going to get 4y is equal to 11.22. And then I'm going to divide, whoops, divide both sides by 4. Okay, whoops, divide by 4. And I get uh, 2.8. Uh, let's just leave it at 2.8. We'll round to the nearest tenth there. Uh, 2.8 centimeters. Good. And now finally to get Z, I would do the same old thing here. So let's maybe just give myself a little bit of space here. So again, 4 over 6. And in this case here, it's going to be 2.13 over Z. So 4Z is going to equal 6 times 2.13. So I'm just going to do that on my calculator over here, 2.13 times 6. So I will get 4z is equal to 12.78. Divide both sides by 4. Whoops. Sorry, I don't want to put an equal sign there because that's I don't want to run them like that. That doesn't make any sense. But this will now become z is equal to, and I've got 12.78 divided by 4. And again, I'll round this to the nearest tenth here. It's approximately 3.2 centimeters. And there you go. Let's take a look at one more question here. And notice there's no diagram given, so we're going to have to trust the information that we're, we're given here. Two sizes of shipping containers are similar in shape. One has a length of 10 meters and a width of 6 meters and a height of 8 meters. Okay. The other has a length of 8 meters. What is the width and height of the second container? Okay. So we're going to call this one the old, and the second container here will be the new. So what I have to work with here is that I have the length of the old, I have the length of the new. So if we go new to old, that'll be 8 over 10. And now, I don't know what the width of the new one is, so let's call that x. But I do know the width of the old one, 6. We're going to cross multiply, so we're going to get 8 times 6 is equal to 10x. So 48 is equal to 10x. And actually, that's very easy to do the next step. I'm going to divide both sides by 10. And I get 4.8 meters. So the width is going to be, the new width here is going to be 4.8 
meters. I'll do the same thing to get the height there because that scale factor is the same, still going to be 8 over 10. Uh, this time I've got my height and the height of the original one was 8. So then we cross multiply 8 times 8 is equal to 10 times y, so it's going to be 64 is equal to 10y. And again, when I divide, and it's really easy to divide by 10, I get 6.4 meters is equal to y. So my new height is 6.4 meters.